Ahoy there, I'm Tiny Pirate, and welcome back to my Rust tutorial series part two. In this episode, we're going to do some basic base building so you can get yourself a nice, secure place to live. Since we last played around, I've done a little bit of gathering and uh, and then in another server I died and gathered and died some more and built a base and things went on. So rather than go through all of that again, I'm on a creative server so I can concentrate a little bit more and show you guys a little bit more of uh, what I'm talking about now that you've developed yourself a bit. So I have uh, set myself up how I normally would and I'm just, I'm looking for, come on. Where's my other bags? There they are. One more. There we go. So I've put down three satchels. So in my inventory, I have my wonderful pickaxe, you or stone hatchet. You probably have something similar. I've got my pickaxe here and I made a bow. And because I spent a bit of time on the old servers, I know how to how to shoot it. And I can hopefully, you know, uh, kill a few pigs and stuff like that. And I've been able to use uh, my hatchet to, to chop the pigs up and get some bones. With a few bones hanging around, it's often a good idea to just grab yourself a, um, where are we? I'm going to just go have a look for it here. Bone, uh, bone knife. Here we go. So a bone knife is pretty fantastic because what it'll do for you is it'll let you cut up an animal and it never, if you're cutting animals with it, rather than just like bashing the wall, if you're cutting animals with it, it never loses any condition, which is that green bar. So it'll never expire, run out, get damaged. And it gives you the most benefit from cutting up uh, the animals. Because if you don't know, different tools provide different benefits. So the better tools provide the most from a node or from a tree. So if you use like a ax on a tree, you get a certain amount of wood. If you use a hatchet, which if you're lucky, I'm just gonna go have a look for one here. You may have got a hatchet from a um, from a crate. If you use a hatchet, then uh, you'll get more wood. And if you use one of these wonderful salvaged axes, then that will get you even more wood or a salvaged ice pick, even more fantastic ore than the pickaxe or the uh, stone pickaxe. So the better the tool, the better the return. Point being really is that your, your bone knife is a pretty good way of getting a, um, a bunch of meat off animals and while we're at it it's worth pointing out as well that the bone club is a I'm just gonna pull it out where are you bone club the bone club is a great tool just for smacking down barrels smacking down barrels with with like your pickaxe it tends to uh, wear the barrel or wear the pickaxe out fairly quickly or the or the hatchet whatever you're using but uh, these things are uh, these bone clubs they're really cheap you're going to end up with tons of bones you don't really need to do much with. So you might as well just, you know, smash barrels with them. And they're pretty fast attack as well. So great for taking out barrels. So at the point where you want to kind of set up, um, there's a lot of things that, you know, I could probably could cover in this tutorial, but I wanted to get a few things down. And that's getting your first base up and running. So just looking at my inventory, this would be a fairly typical inventory for someone. Uh, I've got a bow, I've got 20 arrows, wooden arrows, not the high velocity arrows. High velocity arrows are terrible, they do less damage. Just go with the, with the wooden arrows here. I've got a couple of tools, I've got some leftover food, I've got a bit of... Um, bit of fat here and I have a little bit of salvage now a little bit of salvage is going to give you scrap metal if you recycle it these guys here that the propane tank and the sheet metal really good idea just to recycle them the sheet metal in particular gives you a ton of metal fragments and it will allow you to get a jump start on things really quickly so I've got metal fragments here as well as some wood and some stone that I've saved up. And what you're looking to get is about 2,800 um, of the old stone and about a thousand wood would do the trick. You're going to need 2,000 in total and I'll show you why in a second. A thousand for building and a thousand for your tool cupboard is what you're looking for. Along the way, you might pick up some other bits and bobs like cloth and fat, but ideally you want to get to 100 of, uh, of the metal pretty promptly. So I've gone away and gathered myself another thousand wood. And before we can build, I'm just gonna check what I've got in all of my boxes. I'm gonna make sure I've got everything uh, maybe nice and stashed here. Food and what have you, that's fine, it can stay there. I'm gonna keep my leftover cans and I'll show you why in a bit. And the rest of it is just good to go. So let me have a look what else I've got in here. A few scraps. Here's something that is worth talking about. You're likely to pick up a few of these, or maybe a pipe, 
and middle blades. And the great thing about them is that pipes and middle blades will get you to a salvaged ice pick. And a salvaged ice pick, once you've got it crafted, it's given it to me for free because I'm on a builder server. But once you've got it crafted, this thing will chew through nodes. It does a fantastic job of uh, chopping them up for you. Gives you tons of resources when you do. And uh, you'll find it very wonderful. Very sad to lose. <laughs> Not a very nice thing to lose. But if you do a bunch of kind of um, component hunting through barrels, you're likely to end up with either one of these guys outright or you're going to end up with these, uh, these parts. I'm just going to throw those away for now. So at this point, you've probably got the resources you need. So we've got this stuff stashed away and uh, I'm going to choose a good time to build. The middle of the night is not a bad time and I've stashed it near a good place to build. So right now I'm going to pick up all of these things and, you know, if I was on a live server, pray to uh, the Jesus that I wouldn't uh, uh, be ganked in any way. I'm going to leave some things around. I don't need sulfur ore, this high quality, this metal ore, stuff like this. Uh, I probably don't really need it right now. If I was doing building, I might uh, put away my tools as well. I don't really need those. I will need this. I'm just going to leave uh, other junk just stashed away in case I uh, want to do something with it. So one of the first things I do, and I might even do this before I even have all of these resources gathered, just, you know, when I've got a thousand wood, I'm going to build a tool cupboard. I'm going to throw away that thousand wood so we're kind of accurate because the builder server that I'm on, the creative server, is giving me everything for free. And what a tool cupboard will do is when you put it down and you authorize on it, no one can build within about 17 tiles of it. So if I just put it down here, I'm just going to show you how far that could look. So if I authorize, you see it says building privilege. If I get all the way over to about now, it's going to die off. Oh, still going good. Nice and far. Oh, there it is. Died off here. Back a bit there. So you can see that range in a circle all around the cupboard and for uh, a bunch of floors above it, not infinite, but a whole lot. You don't have to worry about it for now as a newbie. And for half a floor below it, no one else can build unless they authorize. When I hold down E, I can deauthorize myself. So now I can't do any kind of placing of anything. If I have like a box here that I've just built, I can't put it down. It's just going to ignore it. As soon as I authorize, I am now allowed to place it. So that's just a little uh, interesting tidbit for you. And uh, I'm just going to smash that. Okay, so we've got our tool cupboard. We've got all our resources and we've, we're choosing a spot to build. Now for me on the server, so I'm just going to push the map button now. Uh, I'm kind of on this massive build server, a long way from anywhere on the coast in the desert because I kind of like the desert often. If it's a really busy server, I might try and camp all the way up on the on the northern wilds. But bear in mind, if you get wet and you're up in these frosty areas, you will probably die of hypothermia. It is a really tough, tough experience up there. So don't just try and settle there on your first game. Um, these snowy areas are pretty lethal. And also it should be worth pointing out that the game has changed since the last video. So animals no longer are necessarily going to instantly aggro you the way uh, bears and wolves did or the way I worried about it in the last video. But they can potentially chase you on rocks. So be careful. Even boars and deer, uh, they will hurt you if you are low health. They could kill you. Whereas previously in the last version, they've just run away from you. So do keep that in mind. The game does keep changing. Keep an eye on patch notes. So, we've chosen a good spot to build. We're going to need two things. The first is a building plan, and we create that from a piece of paper. Once we've got the piece of paper, the building plan will come up as something in blue that we can build. The other thing we need is a hammer. For a hammer, you just need some wood. So, let me just have a look here. Tools, hammer, 100 wood, easy enough. And the paper is only 5 wood. So, you're going to need uh, about the 2,000 wood that I said, so you can get started. 1,000 of it is for the tool cupboard. The rest is going to be for um, building and for these tools and a couple of other things we'll talk about. So that's good. We're pretty set. We've got those basic tools. The next thing to think about is a door or at least a code lock and a door. So a code lock and a door are going to be really, really helpful to you. I want to, I want to talk briefly about that. So just bear with me. Uh, there are a couple of ways of securing your base. The first way is with a lock. 
So locks are a very cheap way of securing your base. They only cost 100 wood. And if I select it, I can put it on my door and it looks like that. It's like a little, you know, padlock. What I then have to do is hold down E and create a key. That costs about 25 wood. I've now got a key in my inventory and I can uh, come and go from my base. Yes, very nice key in my inventory. The problem is that if I drop the key, like when I die, <laughs> I can't I can't get into the base anymore. And it's looked like the creative server has just deleted that key for me. So I can't get into that base anymore at all. It's lost to me. So if I died with my key and it just despawned, I can't get in my base. If I died with my key and someone stole it, they can get into my base. If I die with, with my key and it's outside and I spawn inside and I haven't put a spare key in a chest inside, I can't get out of my base. So I really hate key locks. What some people do is they put stashes around and so they, they you know, they get their key from inside their base. They, they run out to their stash. They, they crouch. They look around. Oh, no one's watching me. They put their key away. And then they run off and do their adventuring and have fun. And then when they need to get back in their base, they come back. They pick up their key and then they run back in here and woohoo, they're happy. Or they put it right under the door, which is really obvious and people will look for it there. I find this to be really not ideal. Like you, if you can avoid starting with a key lock, you really should do it because experienced players can do that. They can get a feeling for when they're being watched and if someone's outside their door, they can shoot them and gank them and hopefully get them out of there and be secure. But for the average player, there are going to be plenty of times where you open the door, you walk outside and you die three feet away from the base and that's it your base is gone so i say just forget about about these these key locks you want to get straight to a code lock and for that you need 100 metal so the code lock 100 metal fragments that's why i've i've had you gather components and go and recycle them so you've got your 100 metal and the first thing you've done is you've gone and grabbed yourself your code lock you got your code lock and your tool cupboard the next thing you want to kind of have ready is a door if you've done very well for yourself, you could possibly get a sheet metal door. Now I've got some skins that I've bought on the workshop for these, but that's the default sheet metal door, 300 wood and 150 metal fragments. If you can make one of these, brilliant. That means your total metal fragments you could want to start with is around 250 and that's quite a bit, but not unreasonable. I've had starts when I've been very lucky and 250 metal fragments has not been out of the out of reach. Most of the time, you're going to start with a wooden door, which is 300 wood. It's not like the most ideal, but that wooden door and a code lock will be fine. Wooden doors can be quite easily destroyed with explosives and with flamethrowers. Sheet metal doors, a little less easily. Armored doors, which are fantastic. Uh, they can be very, very strong and very hard to take down. I have actually started uh, base builds with armored doors. I've managed to pick up five gears out of boxes and I've managed to get 25 high quality metal out of a recycler and uh, I've actually started first door armor door that would be brilliant but it's kind of unlikely so I'm just going to assume lowest common denominator you have this door so now we have a door a tool cupboard which is going to protect our building from other people getting close to it which is important and well they won't be able to build near it which is important and we have a code lock we have our tools and we have some uh, stone here and we have some some wood. I'm, I'm thinking actually with that being 300, you might want a little bit more than a, a thousand spare wood, but that should do the trick. So I'm going to take out 300, throw that away because that's what we've spent on um, on the door. And uh, we're back down to you know, that much. That's not too bad at all. So what we want to do to build a base, we've got our plan and I can, I can choose um, what to build by pulling out my building plan and then I can see where I can place things. Now I should be able to place things just about anywhere. If, you, if you're if you red, you've got the wrong thing chosen probably. You need to choose foundations first or steps. Um, foundations first. So foundation, blue I can build. And when I look around I can build sort of uh, right into the ground, which I would advise against for a few reasons. Probably a bit too much to go into right now. But I will say, yeah, blue, you're good to go. If you're red, you're probably within someone's building range or building cupboard range and you won't be able to place or you're near a monument like a mine or some other facility you can't build in. But uh, I've got a good spot here. It's a little bit out of the way. Um, I don't really like being overlooked by rocks because people can see down, but this is just a little starter base. And we're going to put this down. So the first thing to do is hold down your right mouse button and uh, choose that foundation. And uh, I'm going to put it right, right here. I'm not going to put it right on the ground. I'm going to give myself just a little bit of elevation. Probably just, I don't know, that much seems to be about right. 
square foundation we're off to our start this is a twig foundation it is very weak your pickaxe will take it down in a few hits it's not the start of a building this is like laying out the structure of your building from there we're going to right click again and we're going to put on a triangle foundation now this is a very very basic starter base um, or it's going to be. There are plenty of designs for slightly more interesting starter bases, starter bases with more room, all this kind of stuff. I've got a, a couple of those sorts of videos on my channel. Uh, what I'm going to what I'm going to say is that I'm going to teach you the very basic, very commonest starter base, so that you can um, enjoy the experience of having one of your very own. And we're not going to overcomplicate things uh, at this stage. So once you've got that down, you need to put walls up. And you want to do all of this pretty jolly quickly. You don't want to be just standing around with all your gear out, basically. People will come up to you and they'll kill you and they'll take your stuff. And you'll be a very sad person. So we're going to put three walls down. And that's this icon here. So three walls. Um, you can choose which side to put your fourth wall. I am going to choose to put it on this side for a reason you'll see soon. So you've got four walls down, and then I've got these doorways here, and I'm going to put these down. One, two. Now, I want you to notice something. If you look at all of these walls, there's an X. That means this is the inside of the wall. Walls have two sides, the inside and the outside. The outside is a lot harder. On the inside of a wall, a few pickaxes, and you can smash this down even when it's upgraded to stone. The outside pickaxing is basically Im impractical. So wall placement is very important. When you go to place a wall, I'll see if I can just show you this again. When you go to place a wall, um, you can, I'm just going to put down a foundation here. When you place a wall, you can see the, the blue X showing the inside. If I press R, it rotates and shows the other side. So like that is fine that that would be the inside uh on the inside of the building and the outside on the other side i'm just going to destroy these if you screw anything up then in theory uh come on game in theory if you have your hammer out you can uh right click and demolish stuff just a quick point if you do manage to put a wall down backwards you can always pull out the hammer right click on the wall and you'll see a little rotate icon you can rotate a wall for about the first 30 seconds after you place it. If you miss this window, you can upgrade the wall and you will be allowed to rotate it after the upgrade. Again, for about 30 seconds. All right, so I got rid of those rubbish foundations. Build the service being odd on me. So now I've got the basic structure laid out and you will want to do this a heck of a lot faster if I haven't said that already. I'm going to put down stairs um, and they've automatically upgraded to, to stone on me. Jolly build a server but they will start off as twig and uh, you can choose to upgrade them or not I, I won't bother with that right now the next thing is you probably just straight away want to pull out the hammer and then you can see what you can reach and upgrade so the first thing is I'm going to upgrade the walls to stone and I'm going to show you the inside and outside of those so you can see what it looks like so get those walls up and now you can see outside of the wall rough cobblestone and inside of the wall uh, soft and smooth don't forget to upgrade your floor if you leave your floor not upgraded people can probably come in from outside and they can chop your foundation down and your walls might fall down which would be very depressing for you the next thing to do is well I mean what I would probably do is I would probably want to get my door on really straight away so I've got my door up and it will snap depending on which side I look on the door frame the door will go either like if I put it here, it's going to go outwards. If I put it here, it's going to go inwards when I open it. What I want to do is actually put it on this door frame here. And I want to put it so that it goes inwards. And I want you to watch what happens when I open it. If I open it, someone can't actually get out or in. I'm just going to um, come through here again. And I'm going to go out this way. So if, some, if you open the door and someone shoots you and you've only got one door then no one can get in. They can cause you problems. They can potentially uh, shoot or damage a tool cupboard if it's here. If they destroy the tool cupboard, then they, they can kind of come in and build their own stuff here. Um, they might be able to mess with your base in other ways, but I find this quite good because I can open the door when I've only got one door with a lock on it, which is pretty common early on. I can look outside and I can go, oh, look, uh, bad guy's there. I'm going to keep away from them or not, however I choose to play it. Ah, I'm brilliant. So I have this door. So I'm inside my base. I'm very happy. I've got the door. All right, door's on. First, next thing is I've got my code lock on the door. Then what you want to do is hold down E and 
set a code. So let's call this one, one, two, three, four. Do not choose one, two, three, four. The light goes red. Now that I have done that, I know the code and I can come and go and no one else can get in there unless they know the code. If I hold down E, I can do things like I can unlock with the code. The door is now green and pretty much anyone can use it, which is a problem. I can give a guest code. A guest code is a code that anyone can uh, use. And so they can, if they know the code, they can come up here, they can punch the code in. There's an option when you hold down E to, to unlock with code. They can punch the, the guest code in and they can use the door, but they can't do what I'm about to do, which is pick the lock off. If you know the code, you can take the lock off your door, see? But I'm just gonna go straight for that. I'm gonna put that one, two, three, four code on again. Suggest you don't use the same one. And now I've got a door. So, wow, I am a very happy camper. I've got a base which is almost, almost secure. The next thing to do is to right click and get a floor on the roof, which is what we call a ceiling. Funny that, right click, upgrade to stone, upgrade to stone. You can, as you see, upgrade to other things like sheet metal or armored or even wood. If you need to, wood is okay. I have spent, I have had bases built where I've spent time just uh, gathering and I've gathered tons of wood, but not much stone. So a couple of the walls have started out as stone. Um, I don't really like to do that too much because stone is much stronger. Wood, someone with a flamethrower can come along and uh, squirt flames against the wall and eventually take it down pretty easy. So we've got a relatively secure base now. I've just changed these foundations out for twig because I don't know, it's perfectly fine. You could change them for wood, I suppose steps it's quite nice to be able to get in and out easy i've i've put on a candle hat because i want you guys to be able to see more uh, easily when i'm inside so i now need to put down my tool cupboard there's a few different ways you can do this there's um I don't know, perhaps the simplest is to just do the very default layout I'm putting a, your tool cupboard in your corner here um now we've got this area claimed all around our base we're pretty secure. So one of the first things we might want to do is build a simple uh, storage chest. And I'm going to put it down um, right snug here. I'm just going to try and get it as snug as possible next to this giant tool cupboard thing. Can you get a little bit more? That's fine. And then I can sort of like dump off the stuff that I don't need anymore. Uh, all of these resources are be pretty much spent at this point. Um, don't ask where I got those bullets from. I've been messing around, and uh, I'd now be you know feeling uh, at least somewhat secure. I have a, a bit of a base. The next thing you want to get is a furnace. So I want to show you what those look like. There's just a simple furnace here. It's a couple of hundred stones, a couple of hundred wood, and 50 low grade. If you've been hunting animals, you will, in theory, have a whole bunch of uh, low grade fuel. Well, you might have some low grade fuel from components. You'll have some. I'm show you what the low grade is to make. So low grade fuel, it takes animal fat and cloth. You're likely to have a fair bit of this around. So you want to get at least 50 of it, as well as the stone and wood to make a furnace. So that's pretty much once you've got your door on, you know, once you've got your door on and your first code lock, and it may only be a wooden door, that's the first thing you want to do. You want to get that furnace up. So I'm going to craft it. Now, imagine I've got all those resources and I should just be able to tuck it into the corner here. Great. And what that is going to do is I can now put ore in that. So I can go and grab all of my stashed ore if I haven't already put it in my, uh, if I haven't already put it in a, in a box inside. I can grab all this stashed ore and I can start to smelt it. Here we go. Here come the boxes. Grab all the stuff that we've stashed. Where are you other boxes? Don't care about this lot anymore. Probably just happily throw it away. Stashes, goodbye. Have we got all of you? Yeah, looks like it. Don't care about those. You might want to use them. I don't know. I'm not especially fussed myself. So, we grab all of our wonderful resources. And what we can do is we've got some stuff here. We've got this metal ore. And we can turn on our furnace. We've got wood in it. And it'll slowly cook. Every time it burns five wood one of these uh, will be produced into one uh, metal fragment. The problem with doing it this way is it's really inefficient, right? So what I'm going to do is I can middle click, ignore the builder interface, or just click and drag uh, to my inventory, and I can split the wood uh, and the metal this way. I'll split the metal this way, and, and now I've got three stacks. So every time it goes down five wood, 
I'll get three more pile up here. And so I can smelt this way. And it's going to take a little while. But, you know, I can use this to very effectively churn through a whole bunch of, uh, a bunch of metal. I will produce charcoal, which is kind of helpful. We'll talk about that later. But what I really want is all these frags. Because my goal, really, is to get this sheet metal door. So I'm going to pretend that we've built one. Get a sheet metal door and another code lock. So... That will take a little while. You're probably going off and doing some more adventuring out there in the wilds, coming back now and then. Just bear in mind that there are lots of good guides on the internet on the, the sort of the ratios you want to build for stuff in the furnace. So if you put a thousand uh, wood in, three stacks of 200 is about uh, all you can get running to produce uh, sort of 800 what am I saying? Yeah, 600 odd metal fragments. I almost never bother filling these up. I always end up with tons of ore and I end up just like filling these up and just chucking in sort of 500 or 600 or 700 wood at a time and then just lifting out the metal um, when I need it. it. It's worth also talking about the fact that you do want to get a campfire in here. You're likely to have some meat ready to cook and so a campfire can be a uh, really helpful thing to throw down. I would want to chuck mine. I sometimes chuck it all the way over in this corner because it doesn't get in the way and it's a good spot for it. If you stand on it, like it will burn you, not on the creative server I'm on, but it will burn you and that can be very annoying. It does provide comfort, which you see in the bottom right, and that will heal you slowly if you're not starving or dehydrated. And the other thing you want to do is if you hold down E, you can extinguish the fire. Or if you just press E on it, you can turn it on and off from this interface. You can put meat in, but again, it will produce charcoal, cooked meat. So it gives you two slots pretty much for one type of meat. If it is full, if this whole lot is full, it will basically turn off as soon as something gets spat out. And that is annoying, but it can be quite a good way to ensure you don't burn meat. Because if you just leave this thing running and the space, it will fill with a bit of cooked meat and then the cooked meat will become burned meat which is very annoying. You of course want to try and get down a sleeping bag and I'm just gonna put the sleeping bag, oh, I don't know, uh, there say. That seems to be good and I'm gonna rename it base since I now have a base. The other great thing is you can actually cook, go away interface, you can actually cook your leftover cans and they will turn into metal fragments which is, um, I don't know, it's quite nice. It's free metal fragments for not doing very much, just filling your belly with food as you roam around gathering stuff. So as you can see, as I cook up these cans, they become 15 metal fragments each, which if you're saving for a door or another code lock is um, is really helpful. Uh, just ignoring that for now, I can I can chuck these in here and uh, get the meat cooking and the, the cooked meat will start to pile up here if I leave it too long. It will become burned and the fire will spit it out and shut down. Uh, you have to come in and pick up your burned meat and sort out your inventory and turn it on again. That can be a little bit annoying. So you've got your door ready. You've got a couple of options. You could just throw your metal door down on the inside of your base. And uh, I don't know which way you prefer to run it yourself. If it's if it's opening out like that, then you can, you can kind of add an extra layer of uh, difficulty to get through. It's not impossible, but it is hard. Um, if you don't like how your door is, then if you hold down while the door is open, if you hold down the E button, I can pick it up. So maybe you want an inward fo fo facing door. So there you go, I've got it facing inwards. Yours might look a little different. This is a cool skin I found uh, on the market. I'm gonna turn off the fire now, have a little munch. Just leave that off. And uh, I don't know, munch on some of this pork. I'm, nom, 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 nom. I'm full already, thanks to the creative server. So I don't have to worry. I'll just turn it on and uh, take out that stuff. So you have a choice of the door. You can just uh, replace your your uh, inner door, and now you have what's called uh, airlock here. So if I just one, two, three, four, I can type it on the keyboard. Uh, so now I've got an airlock, and to get into and out of my base, I'm going to have to fiddle around with with two doors. That's not really a bad thing because now, you know, if I die on the doorstep, no one can get into my base. They they're, they're trapped by this uh, lock here. They can't get in, and I can maybe spawn inside and grab a weapon, or I can just ignore them till they go away. If I uh, wanted to, I could also take this lock off. So I'm just going to take it off right now. Uh, pick up lock, open the door. Uh, let's have a look, pick up the door. And I could have put the metal door on the outside and that will kind of maybe discourage someone from trying to take on your base. 
Um, it's not, no, I don't know, guaranteed. Seeing a wooden door, someone might think, oh, this is going to be a good target for a raid. And they, they come along and they put explosives or they set it on fire. And even if they don't make it all the way into your base, because there's now a metal door on the inside, they need explosives for that, they, you know, they might still waste your time by destroying your door and, you know, destroying your lovely code lock. But if you've got two doors and you're, you know, you've got this one, um, is it? Come here, door. Let me, oh gosh. Come here. Right. Yes, pick up the door. So if you if you like this and you're busy unlocking this door and you're picking up this lock and picking up this door, you now have a pretty dangerous situation with your everything's hanging out and you want to be able to get this door on really quick. So that's probably the kind of time a sort of activity you would do, I don't know, in the dark. Hopefully no one's out camping you. And then you can go and just put the softer wooden door on the inside of your base. I would want to pretty promptly you know, be smelting metal fragments again, getting up a good pile of them and making yet another sheet metal door so that you know, both doors here are wonderful sheet metal and uh, nice and secure. So do use your airlock properly, close the doors before you come in and out, don't let your both doors be open or anything even if you do have a, an airlock like I have. So at this point if you get this far you're doing really well. I'd be surprised if you if you manage to do this on your first playthrough or on any server. I mean, maybe if you chose a very quiet server, you can get a feel for the game that way. But if you're on a busy server, you might not make it this far before losing all your stuff. Turn off fire. So if you've made it this far, you've got a little base, you're feeling pretty chuffed with yourself. It's now time to kind of enhance things a little bit. So you've got a few metal fragments cooking. You've, you've probably got some gunpowder cooking. Might be a good time to switch that out for sulfur which um, where did I put my sulfur? There it is. So I'm just gonna pick this up and I'm gonna chuck my sulfur in here. Um, split it up a little bit. I don't know, that'll probably do the trick. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook up a little bit of sulfur, which is always nice to do. And I've got the metal to make boxes. I have a lot of skinned boxes because I really like them. Um, you can buy them on the marketplace. They release skins every week for cheap and they go up in price as the uh, as the market sort of ages. So you have to get in on the first week they're out to get them at a good price. So here's a box. These large wooden box, 200 wood and 50 uh, 250 wood, 50 metal fragments, not too bad. And you can place that down pretty easily in a few different places. I might have to uh, pick up the old sleeping bag here. I don't want to place it right against this door. Uh, this can make getting in and out of your door actually <laughs> really hard. So we're going to kind of just cram it in, I don't know, somewhere over here will probably do the trick. I might jump on this box here so I can get a good look. If I put it, I'm going to crouch and jump onto my furnace, maybe. No, I suck at that. So we're just going to plop it down uh, about, try and get it nice and snug as I can there. Great, I now have a box and uh, I should be able to crouch my way around my tiny, tiny little base. There we go, I can get in and out. Probably can't get the sleeping bag fully in the, in the base anymore. So if I jump, I can put it down. And now what I've got is possibly room for another small box. Let's have a look. Yeah, looks like it. Yay. And if I was feeling really lucky, I might just have room for yet another one, but I don't. No, oh, maybe if I maybe if I pick that one up. Pick up sleeping bag. Come here. Yeah, I can maybe snug one in there. And that gives me enough room to just put the sleeping bag there. So yeah, I can get in and out of the base this way. Um, and I have, you know, some storage, not amazing, but it'll do the trick. And now I can start you know, looting and pillaging out in the wilds and gathering stone and other resources. And I can also gather me some um, wonderful gunpowder and, well, some, some charcoal and some, uh, some uh, sulfur here. And I can actually start making gunpowder, which should be available pretty easily from here. You'll make a certain amount of it, not very much probably. And from there, you might want to think about your first weapons. So your first weapons are likely to be outside of the bow. It's possible you go for a revolver. They're quite cheap. Uh, a lot of people really fancy the water pipe shotgun. It is really cheap. And the ammunition for it is just, look, it's just a little bit of stone and a little bit of gunpowder. So you can craft up a bunch of it. You can, you can do that quite cheaply. I would never go out with 12 shotgun shells. Like, you'd be lucky if you could use uh, six of them. 
in any kind of fight before you died. But, I mean, the great thing about this is you get up close behind something and bam, one headshot with that up close, pretty much everyone's dead. So a bow and a, and a water pipe shotgun are quite common newbie weapons. You also might have picked up some of these sheet metal um, signs or road signs here. They can be quite good armor. So it's worth just talking about your initial sets of armor. A wood chest plate, a wood helmet and wood legging is actually not too bad at all. Quite reasonable. If I had a ton of wood lying around, like if I've got a salvaged axe and I've just harvested half a forest, I would definitely want some of this. The next thing you might want to get is this stuff, road sign kilts. They're pretty, and road sign jackets. They're pretty cheap, see? Leather, which you're going to get from animals. Road signs, which are pretty common in boxes. And sewing kits, which are just about everywhere. Very effective. Pair it up with a coffee can helmet, which again, not too much. Or if you're feeling really cheap, um, maybe one of these bucket helmets. Uh, or even just a wooden helmet then you're looking at quite a good set of starter gear and you could do a bit of roaming with that and you know go out and cause a bit of uh, mayhem go harvest some farmers now that you're all set up so I just want to recap something and in case you missed it sulfur and and charcoal makes gunpowder you do want to keep your charcoal it takes quite a bit to get anywhere useful with these you, you don't need a lot of gunpowder for things like handmade shells but if you make like that revolver uh, that was an option uh, and you should be a little bit familiar with that hopefully from the builder servers then you're going to need um, or from the, the other servers you're going to need pistol bullets and you see you're starting to get into more metal fragments more gunpowder uh, and likewise uh, rifles if you're ever fortunate enough to get them um, you can get different slugs and uh, buckshot for your uh, water pipe shotgun if you choose as you can see it takes metal fragments over the handmade shell which takes stone some people swear by 12 gauge, a lot, a lot of other people just swear by nothing but these rubbishy handmade shells for their water pipes. Um, up to you, experiment. I think these are probably fine, pretty cheap. Um, and the other point to make out is that at some point you're probably going to want to smelt your high quality metal ore. So I'm just going to turn this off now and we're going to chuck in the high quality metal. Go away game interface element. And the high quality metal ore is going to produce for you um, high quality metal that's pretty much essential for a lot of the nicer weapons. So you can see here the semi-automatic pistol, which is a pretty popular weapon for a lot of use, needs high quality metal. The armored door, which you saw earlier, is going to need uh, 25 high quality metal and 5 gears. And uh, so you, you do want to eventually fairly promptly smelt this up. Likewise, better quality armor needs high quality metal. So at this point you're pretty secure, you hopefully have some tools for farming. If you don't have salvage gear then look under tools and you can see that hatchets and uh, pickaxes here, they're not extremely expensive to make but um, they just take a bit of time for you to smelt or to refine stuff. But these are you know, fantastic d tools for you to go and do some more harvesting. So you can go out there and you can uh, you know, harvest some nodes, gather some resources, and you may eventually want to, if you're a solo player, work on a different solo base of some kind. Um, these little starter bases, you'll run out of room in them really quickly and uh, you'll find yourself pretty cramped and the other risk is that if anyone you know if anyone kills you with the door open and you, you won't be able to secure this bag from being chopped up by someone which you know will prevent you from spawning there which will be disappointing so eventually you're going to want to move on from your little starter base there are plenty of youtube videos discussing base building and uh, how to do it and i highly recommend you spend time watching or googling up some you know solo base starter base um, videos you can watch my uh, little starter base videos. Uh, you should also watch people like Ramsey on YouTube who is a uh, very excellent raider. He doesn't use a lot of explosives or anything. He often just figures out where to jump over the wall through a complex process you can figure out by watching. And he then gets into bases and smashes them. So just be conscious. Don't just start go building some massive compound um, on your own without at least learning a bit about base building which is a little bit outside of the scope of this video. But for now, this kind of structure will set you up pretty nicely with a uh, place to live, somewhere to spawn, somewhere to cook up your materials and to make your weapons and ammo, and uh, somewhere to hopefully survive for a little while longer. Anyway, I've been Tiny Pirate. I hope this uh, little tutorial part two of my Rust tutorial video series has been enjoyable for you. If you liked it, do, I don't know, chuck a like on the video, chuck a comment, tell your friends where to come watch it. 
Uh, go gank some noobs in my name, now that you are, of course, no longer a noob. Until next time, good night.